Hi, Zeus here. I used some seriously strange troop combinations to get an 11 times win streak and reached global 163. And I want to show you how I did it. So in season 66, I'm in five engines now and I'm using a very strange troop combination of one heavy choppa which is only at level one and there's no heavies yet so the heavies that it spits out are only level one and then i'm using max level riflemen five landing craft of those and then two landing craft of max level medics and i've got flare and i am just flaring through these bases as the riflemen are clearing the defenses and it's a very strange troop combination i gotta tell you but it works and it's effective the medics can actually heal up the damage from a single machine gun or a single flamethrower without needing to shock them. And that is the reason why there's two boats of medics. Now, if there's a flamethrower or machine gun with green mines in the vicinity, you have to shock them and then allow the medics to heal them up or throw down a health pack or use second wind to respawn them back. All right, now here's a second kind of a base, and I'm starting this one on the left side, and I managed to bypass a bunch of defenses. And again, if you can bypass defenses, that's a good thing because it's going to save you time. Now, part of the problem that you've got here is keeping all your troops together, because if you don't keep your troops together, it's likely that you will fizzle. So you've got to be vigilant to see what's going on with your troops, and then you've got to decide if only a few wander off, whether or not you want to waste some gunboat energy to get them back with the main group of your troops, or just let them go and respawn them from second wind. Now the doom cannon here is a bit of a problem, as are these green mines on the approach to the last two engines in the corner. So I'm going to try to go around those green mines, which worked out very well. And I'm going to try to stay away from the, the Doom Cannon until I've cleared everything else in the vicinity, and then I throw down a shock on the Doom Cannon. Again, don't need to worry about that single machine gun going after my troops. That's not a problem. The Doom Cannon is the problem here. So I'm going to try to keep the Doom Cannon and that cannon constantly shocked until the base is cleared. Now, this next base is a variation of the first one I showed you. It actually has a cannon on the right side, which is really not a big deal. If it hits riflemen, it's only going to take out one or two riflemen, which you can spawn back with second wind. If it hits your heavy choppa, that's a bigger problem because you don't want to lose the heavy choppa too early. And then the key thing here is you have to make that flare timely, otherwise your riflemen are going to try to go back around to the bottom left and get lost in those defenses down there, and that's not a good thing. Now, key here is getting the doom cannon suppressed and then knocking down those greens mines without losing a ton of troops that's why i threw down the health pack to help and i was suppressing the doom cannon i want to get away from that machine gun need to clear it and you've seen the rest of how that attack proceeds so i'm not going to waste your time watching that now here is a four engine base and on these i'm using warriors right now now later when i got seekers i started using seekers on these which are much more effective and easier to handle but before i got seekers i'm using warriors with the warriors you got to make sure that machine guns and flamethrowers are suppressed even if you lose one or two warriors on a cannon or a boom cannon that's not a really big problem and once you take down that engine there the rocket launchers can't even get you you're you're underneath their donut hole so you don't need to worry about that at all threw down a health pack just to heal them up a little bit now we're gonna have some fun we're gonna send the warriors around the world here first i'm going to go back down and flare to that flamethrower down there throw down a health pack so that the warriors don't get too banged up by the flamethrower then i'm going to flare them to the left side and then around that flamethrower and I threw that just a little bit too early the flamethrower there's going to get a few of them injured along the way and I lost two three four five <laughs> but
But anyway, I've got the bulk of my warriors down there successfully a little bit quicker by taking the turn a little bit too fast. And I've got two shocks down, one suppressing the Doom Cannon as soon as it comes in range, and the other suppressing the first and second machine gun there. And as soon as I get the energy from that last second to last engine, I'm going to throw down a final shock on the Doom Cannon. Now, this next base does not have green mines, and when you are coming up against a four or five engine base that does not have green mines, this is a very effective technique. You only need one medic to offset the effect of the flamethrower on your troops. So I land one medic and three landing craft of riflemen on the left flamethrower, one medic and three riflemen landing craft on the right flamethrower. And the medics and the Riflemen just distribute themselves through the base and very efficiently and very quickly kill all of the defenses. And it's uh, just a really good technique to uh, take down a base like this. Now here's another base without green mines and I use exactly the same technique except this time because of how the defenses were distributed, the riflemen and medics distributed themselves in a different way. And again, the key to being successful here is you don't need to worry about the single shot weapons like a cannon or a boom cannon or a sniper tower. You do have to worry about flamethrowers that are combined with other things like a machine gun or two machine guns or a doom cannon. And so if you do not have medics around and your riflemen encounter a machine gun or a flamethrower, you have to also throw down shocks or a health pack to keep them alive. Now on this base, which is concentrated on the left side, but also has one engine in the far right, I decided to use a different group of troops, five landing craft of warriors, two landing craft of riflemen, and one landing craft of medics, and that allowed the engine at the top to get destroyed more rapidly. And the rifleman didn't take the whole trip up to the far right corner. And I'm shocking the doom cannon and those two flamethrowers. And I'm shocking multiple machine guns and that flamethrower there. And just trying to work my way as quickly through the base as possible without losing too many troops, and that worked out extremely well. So this is where my win streak started. I didn't do so well on these three bases, so I'm not gonna show you those three attacks. Now I'm gonna go back and show you the current tech tree that I'm using. I have heavy choppas on tick one. I have not opened anything off the path except for the troop damage node there and shock bombs and the troop health node there and I'm just going straight down the main path as fast as I can. I opened the building health node there and I'm just showing you all the things I did not open right and by going down the main path so quickly it's going to get me to Seekers really fast, and the Seekers are overpowered uh, at four engines and five engines until the shock launchers come out. Now, with the next two chests I get, I'm going to open up and max out Kavan, because I think that second win with this troop style combat is going to be extremely powerful. And after Kavan, the shock launcher node, building damage node, and then seekers, and then hot pot. Now after hot pot, I decided to go back in the tech tree to pick up more gunboat energy. And to get that, I needed to add also a little bit of troop health and some troop damage, all of which is very helpful with seekers. Now I'm trying to get down the tech tree as fast as possible. 
because the seventh engine has an amazing array of amazingly positive nodes. And I can't emphasize this enough that you've got to get the seven engines as fast as possible. And if you can get to seven engines with bombardiers and heavies, it is going to be awesome. All right, now I'm going to try to extend my win streak to get to the level 18 chest, which if I can get that, then that speeds up my process of getting to Kavan. Now with this base, I'm going to first attack that boom cannon because ultimately I want to swing my warriors all the way from the right side to the left side. After I take out that boom cannon, I'm going to go right up the right edge with all my troops. And I'm going to try to take out the two engines on the far right side. And now I'm thinking maybe I'll just throw in one boat of riflemen so I don't lose too many warriors as they go by the boom cannon. Also picking up a little bit of gunboat energy is not, not, not a bad idea because it always helps with having just maybe that extra last shock. A little bit more concerned about the other side because the other side has the doom cannon. All right, this is going very well and I've got just the last flamethrower there that's a little bit dangerous banged up my troops a little bit, but not too bad. So I threw down a health pack there to heal them back up. And we take down the rocket launchers to collect a little bit more gunboat energy. And I'm going to now flare back. And we're gonna do a big swing. And this is part of the reason why I decided to take out that boom cannon, is that ultimately I'm gonna to have to deal with it anyway. Might as well just deal with it up front and not lose too many warriors in the process. Now I've chosen not to shock this cannon because I need all the energy I can get for the left side. And I'm going to flare over to the far left edge. Another flare to make sure they keep going instead of loop back around. I'm going to shock the two machine guns and the flamethrower there. And you can notice that my troops health is relatively low bit of a problem. Now it looks like the, the troops are getting pounded by that doom cannon, but not so bad. It's a bit, bit out of range and it's a pretty good time, 214. And I've won because my opponent has retreated. A few moments later. Now fortunately I lost connectivity. Now with that victory, I'll have the engines to open my time chest. With this uh, time chest, I'm one chest short of Kavan. Now, if I can win the next battle, I've got a nine times win streak going now, I can get my level 18 chest. I'm currently 211 on the global leaderboard. And if I win, that'll get me Kavan, and that'll be really helpful with my attacks going forward. Hopefully I can move up closer to level 19. So let's see if I can win my boss battle for my level 18 chest. So this base has green mines, so I'm going to switch back to the troop combination with the heavy choppa that spawns out some level 1 heavies and the two medics and the five boats of riflemen. I think that'll do better against this base. And hopefully this will work. I really want to win this boss battle. Now I do have a bit of an advantage against this player because he's got two of the same boost nodes that I've got, but he does not have the plus 50% troop health boost node that I've got. So hopefully my troops will last longer going through his base than his troops last going through my base. All right, so initially I'm just trying to clear these few boom cannons and cannons and the rocket launcher and then I'm going to flare into the right corner and I'm going to try to flare a little bit around to the right of those green mines so that the riflemen that don't really pay attention to the flare as well as they should 
it's only a few of them roll up on the green lines and die and hopefully the bulk of my troops do not and there's going to be a big mass casualty event there at the end of that group of green mines but it's okay still got quite a few and the medics heal up the rest threw down a shock on the doom cannon there flared the doom cannon because I don't want to lose any more troops down there and I'm coming out of there with a little less than half of my troops so that's not so great but he did have a good design there with all those green mines. There's really nothing you can do about it. If you want to take down the engine, you got to lose a bunch of troops. Now I'm going to try to flare around those three green mines there, because if I roll my troops over them, it's going to be ugly. So I flared in the middle of those two cannons, and then once they're down, the troops will roll up to that third cannon there along the the edge of the gap there. Now, as soon as that's done, I'm going to flare towards the last three engines. Threw down a shock on those five defenses, including a flamethrower and a machine gun. There are two machine guns there on the left, so that could be problematic. I'm going to flare to that boom cannon try to take that down faster because it's just going to pick off my troops one by one and while the engine's going down some troops take down their rocket launcher threw down a health pack to try to heal up my troops there because the two machine guns are doing some real damage threw down a shock once the engine went down threw down another health pack because my shock on those two machine guns is running out I want to make sure my troops are at full health when they confront the two unshock machine guns. Machine gun. I have a shock down on the last flamethrower there, and it's going to start attacking my troops. But again, the 10 medics will heal up the riflemen against a single flamethrower. It's not a problem. So a pretty ugly time, 52 seconds. So let's see how my opponent's doing. Well, it looks like... I'm going to win because <laughs> he, he did even worse on my base, despite the fact that he has Kavan to spawn second win. But he did not fizzle, and I have to say my base has stumped a lot of players so far, and it's very difficult to beat if you don't have a, a lot of troop health or troop damage. He's doing a fine job flaring to that machine gun. That's pretty important. To get that out of the way. He only has four medics left, so if he actually encounters the flamethrower, they may not they may not make it. He's only got four medics plus Gavon versus my ten medics. So he really can't do a Hail Mary on the boom cannon. That's not gonna work. Alright, so with this chest, I'm gonna be able to open up and max out Dr. Kavan, and that's gonna be super cool because it's gonna give me a real advantage going forward, as you can imagine. I and mean, if I could have respawned uh, all my troops one or two or three times, I would have finished that base a lot faster. Also, it was pretty cool. I got uh, plus 18 stars on that one, and now I am number 156 on the global leaderboard. And we're gonna open the Kavan and max him out. And I'm gonna see if I can continue my win streak. And I won the next two battles and got to an 11 times win streak before I lost. And I got to 163 on the global leaderboard with 45 stars and level 18. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We've got over 200 videos on a variety of Boom Beach topics for you to enjoy and explore. And please give this video a like. It'll help us with the gods of the algorithm and help grow our channel. And thanks, as always, to Hercules for help with the video editing.